Guys, Ethereum has just completed another massive update. The number one smart contract platform and the number two cryptocurrency by market crap just completed the Pectra upgrade, which is a major milestone that takes this blockchain, Ethereum, one step closer to its final vision. One of industrial strength and scalability and speed so that it can onboard the next billion users for mass adoption of blockchain technology. And in this video, I'm gonna unpack what just happened, why this is such a big deal for the tech, and answer the question a lot of you probably have which is what's going to happen to the price of Ether. I'm going to explain everything in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And if you want to take advantage of all the insane opportunity happening in the blockchain space right now, then listen up, because I'm launching the ultimate blockchain training, the Blockchain Bootcamp 3.0, next Thursday, May 15th. Inside, we're gonna cover everything you need to know to master blockchain from scratch, like Ethereum, Solidity, Solana, Rust, Flash Loans, AI, and so much more. So make sure you hold your spot the link down below. All right, so let's get into this. So let's talk about this massive update for Ethereum. Now, I'm actually recording this video on the eve of the updates, so and by the time this video releases, it will already be live, okay? And obviously, nothing I'm saying in this video is zombie financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy, sell, or hold any cryptocurrency based on this information. So this big Ethereum upgrade that just happened is the Ethereum Pectra update. Okay, so I've been talking about this for several months on my channel, but I believe that this is a very important step in Ethereum's history towards becoming a blockchain that's prime time and ready for mass adoption. Because if you're not familiar with how Ethereum works and you're just saying like, hey, Ethereum's too slow, it's too expensive, it's never gonna work. Well, that's because you're not using the final form of Ethereum right now. It's actually a blockchain that's getting upgraded over time, okay? And the latest upgrades going on with the Pectra upgrade. So what all took place here? Well, unlike some of the previous upgrades, um, in the past that we've seen, there was no like really singular focus that made it go from zero to one. So in the past, we've seen big things like proof of stake implemented onto the blockchain or allowing people to withdraw their ether or implementing a fee burning mechanism. Okay. So we don't have any massive milestones just like that, but there are some really critical updates in this particular upgrade that are moving the needle closer towards the Ethereum that we want to have so that we can have all types of people come and use the blockchain and also create new use cases that we really couldn't do before this went live. So what are some of these things that makes Ethereum better with this upgrade? Well, we'll talk about high level attributes and then we'll get into the specific details in a second, but enhanced scalability. So basically it is making Ethereum process more transactions more efficiently. Uh, it's actually making Ethereum cheaper to use, so it's getting faster and cheaper. All right, we're improving the security, which is all a good thing, and it's also introducing some completely new uh, features to the blockchain that were not there before. Okay, so let's work backwards. Let's start off with the new features. So I'm going to go through some of these EIPs, which are basically just Ethereum improvement proposals. These are the lists of things they want to get included into the upgrades. Okay, it all goes through this process of getting voted on, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll talk about the ones that I'm most excited about. So let's start off with EIP 7702, which is the introduction of account abstraction, okay? So that's going back to this idea of smart accounts and smart wallets. So right now, if you're using the blockchain and using a wallet like MetaMask or Phantom or something like that, basically it's gonna control a private key that corresponds to an address and you're able to essentially just use that and you're kind of limited to what you can do because it's an externally owned account. But then there's also smart contracts on the blockchain that can do more advanced things like uh, transactions with multiple steps or complex transactions, right? It can, it, can, it can do a lot more things than your regular wallet could. So what this smart account allows you to do is basically let your externally owned wallet temporarily act as a smart contract and get a lot of the benefits of a smart contract while you're using it. So what are some examples? Well, basically you could do things like batch transactions in a single click. So one of the most frustrating headaches in crypto right now is whenever you go trade a token on something like Uniswap, you have to approve the token and swap it. It's two clicks, all right? But with this, you can actually batch it to do the approval and the swap all in one transaction, one button click, boom. Huge wallet quality of life boost. Now, not removing a massive bottleneck for mass adoption, but still a big deal. But what could actually make this a lot better. Well, if you're delegating to uh, a smart wallet, you could basically do things like automate payments, all right? So if you want to have 
pay for things on autopilot like we already do in traditional finance or just in regular consumer finance, you could do that with smart accounts, all right? So basically, if you wanna have subscription-based applications in crypto, this would now be possible with this new upgrade. And it's not really a business model that's super viable in crypto right now, unless you're just manually paying for things on annual plans. What if you actually wanna pay on a monthly basis? Well, that's gonna open up the business model for software as a service in crypto that don't have very efficient ways of billing right now. But also a huge part of this is actually sponsoring other people's gas fees, okay? And this is a vision that's kind of been around in crypto for a long time, but you know, hasn't really taken off really well until now. So whenever you're going to pay for a transaction, you have a gas fee. That gas fee is there for a reason. You want to charge people money to make transactions on a blockchain to prevent spam and overuse of the network, okay? So, but it's also a friction point for other people to use the blockchain in some cases, all right? Now, what I could theoretically do is create an application that paid my users gas fees for me, all right? And that could open up all kinds of new business models in crypto that we don't have right now. Imagine creating an app and being able to onboard a user without them needing any crypto in their wallet, that's going to that's gonna make so many different things happen that can't happen. All right, so it's also going to do lots of other things like implement better recovery for wallets. So one of the biggest problems people have now is they lose their private keys, their seed phrase to their wallet. But what if you could actually have a social recovery mechanism where through social means, you could actually regain access to your account so that you don't just like accidentally lose your private key or lose your seed phrase and boom, it's gone forever. But also make this secure where other people can't socially engineer a way to recover your own account. Well, that's what this is about. And basically it's a better sticking point for people to actually get into crypto and feel like they can use their wallets confidently to like, hey, there's no password reset button on this thing, man. Well, this kind of is like a password reset button. It's a way of recovering your account um, that you wouldn't be able to have access to without this upgrade. Also like other authentication mechanisms that don't require a seed phrase, which is another important part of the process as well. All right, so those are a lot of the new features that are coming into the blockchain. But again, this is actually going to improve the performance of the chain itself. So again, it is going to reduce the transaction fees. So basically there's gonna be data processing and storage management that's gonna get more efficient, okay? And that would make the actual gas fees themselves get cheaper. So that's gonna make Ethereum cheaper to use every single time you pay a gas fee to the network. It's also going to have enhanced scalability. So basically this is going to increase the network's transaction capacity. So you always have to think about scalability in two different terms, okay? Uh, the actual transactions per second and then the block time, basically how long it takes for a transaction to actually get finalized into a block. Now, my understanding here is this actually is going to increase the TPS. With this mechanism, we probably won't see the block time reduced that much, but that's okay. It still is better. In my opinion, TPS is going to be more important than the actual block time in this case. Do you really care if you have to wait 10 seconds for your transaction to go through? Or would you rather have everybody's transactions essentially be able to be accommodated at once without having to go into a queue? All right, there's several other things this upgrade. One last thing that most people watching this video, it's not really going to resonate with them, but I still think it's a big deal is that now whenever you run an Ethereum validator, you can actually stake more than 32 Ether, okay? So basically right now, if you're gonna run a full validator node on Ethereum, basically one of the computers that helps run the blockchain, you have to stake Ether, you have to stake 32 Ether, so that's a lot of money, all right? But if you have like 33 Ether, like before this upgrade, it doesn't matter. Like you can't stake 33 Ether into the validator and get the benefit, all right? You'd actually have to accumulate 32 more Ether to run a completely separate validator, okay? So what this upgrade does is it re removes that. So basically now you could just stack as much ETH as you want to. I think there's probably an upper limit. I don't know what it is. But for most people, reasonably, as much ETH as you want to into a single validator and then still get the benefit, all right? Now, I've heard a lot of people criticize this because it says, hey, that's gonna make the number of validators drop, okay? So it's not really that important about how many validators we have as, as much ETH is secure in the network. Now. It still is important, but what's probably gonna happen after this, a lot of people are talking about this, is the number of validators that are gonna show up on the Ethereum network is gonna shrink, okay? That's because people with a lot of Ether are running multiple validators, and I do expect this number to go down after. Uh, you're gonna probably get to see a lot of, you know, drama about this online, but before all that happens, watch this video, you know, reference that point. That's gonna help that, you know, rectify in your mind. All right, so those are some of those critical things that are going on with this uh, Ethereum Pectra upgrade that's just gone live, all right? So finally, you know, what's gonna happen to the price of Ether? As always, nothing I'm saying this section is not be financial advice. You know, I made a video about this a couple weeks ago before the update went live. 
you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at this, but now that we're approaching the time of this update at the time of recording this video, honestly, I just don't expect the update to have a significant pull on the price of Ether, okay, for lots of reasons. Number one, I think the crypto market's highly dependent upon what's going on with the stock market, which both those things reflect their broader economy right now. A lot of fears with tariffs, a lot of fears with changes with the administration, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of fears of recession, Federal Reserve, interest rates, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And we're just not escaping that in crypto right now. And for that reason, you know, prices have gone down for several months. And as a consequence, a lot of people just checked out of crypto. Okay. They're not watching the prices. They're not really looking forward to what's happening. They're not anticipating a big Ethereum upgrade and for this to make the coin moon. So for that reason, I just don't think it's going to have a massive effect on the actual price itself. It could we see a little bit of the pressure of a sort of buy the rumor, sell the news where the, you know, the Ethereum price goes up a little bit before the upgrade and then dumps right before or right after or around the time of the event. Maybe a little bit, but I don't think it's going to like, you know, half the value of Ether after the upgrade goes live as a sell the news reaction. If that happened, it, I wouldn't see Ether do that by itself relative to all the other altcoin market. I think Bitcoin's kind of doing its thing and that's gonna be one of the more dominant influences. All right, so that's an overview of this massive Ethereum upgrade that just went live. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And as always, if you wanna take advantage of all the opportunity that's happening in blockchain right now, then make sure you mark your calendar for next Thursday, May 15th, because I'm launching the ultimate end all be all training for blockchain developers the Blockchain Bootcamp 3.0. Inside, we're going to cover everything that you need to know to cover blockchain from zero all the way to master. Things like Ethereum, Solidity, Solana, Rust, Flash Loans, AI, and so much more. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Hold your spot with the link down below. So that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you inside.